Okay, so I'm continuing my Atwood machine series. And in this problem, I want to look at the half Atwood machine with friction and find out what the minimum coefficient of friction between block number two and the surface is so that the thing starts to slide. So let me just give a quick review where we've been. Uh, so the first thing I did was a normal Atwood machine, which is just a pulley with two masses, a frictionless pulley. And then I did a half Atwood machine without friction. And then I did an inclined I don't know what to call this. I think I called it an inclined half atwood. Uh, after that, I did a uh, the speed of a half atwood machine as it falls, and then I did uh, a half atwood machine with friction. So that's where we are. And this is actually the acceleration of the half atwood machine if it starts to slide. But what if it doesn't slide at all? Okay. So let's think about uh, this case. If so, okay. There's two things. Number one. This is what I said before, A1 magnitude equals A2 magnitude. This says that the acceleration of this block has to be equal, the magnitude has to be the acceleration of this block because if the string doesn't stretch, uh, then as this one moves, that one has to have the same velocity. And so since time, the acceleration depends on the change of velocity, the acceleration magnitude has to be the same. This one's gonna, they could have different directions. And in this case, actually, we're looking at the case where it's zero acceleration. The other thing is T1 magnitude equals T2 magnitude. These are the two key things for Atwood's machine. So the tension pulling on this, the magnitude of that tension force is the same tension as pulling on this one, the magnitude. Okay, so let's just uh, say one more thing. If it's at rest and just about to slide, I can use the following uh, model for the co for the frictional force. The frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Now, normally it would look like this: the friction force would be less than or equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. But we're at this minimum possible coefficient of friction, and so we're going to set it equal to that would give them the maximum force. Okay, I'm going to draw the force diagram for mass two. So here I have this, I have the gravitational force, M2G pulling down, I have the normal force pushing up, and then I have the tension this way, and the friction force. And I know that it's at rest, right, because it's just when it starts to move. So I can say F net Y, it's gonna be N minus M2G equals zero, and F net X equals T minus the frictional force equals zero. Those two, th two things have to be true. Now, up here, I can go ahead and say the frictional force, I can solve this for N, it's just gonna be M2G. So the frictional force is gonna be the coefficient of static friction times M2G, and that goes in right there. But what about the tension, All right? Because I'm trying to solve for this coefficient. So for the tension, let's go over to mass one. So mass one looks like this. that gravitational force and the tension. And here, since the net force in the y direction is zero, T minus M1G equals zero. So T equals M1G. Now, this is uh, dangerous, right? Because this is something that you want to do when the situation's accelerating. But if the things are accelerating, the tension is not equal to the weight, only when it's not accelerating. Because now you have a zero right here. So be very careful. Just because it's true here doesn't mean it's always true. I made that mistake back in 1989. I remember it well. I really do remember setting the tension equal to this for this accelerating situation. I got the problem wrong. So there you go. I did, we didn't have YouTube in 1989. I don't know if you knew that. Okay, so now I can put that in up here, put this in up here, and I get M1G minus mu sub S M2G equals zero, and I can solve this for the coefficient. I get mu sub S equals M1G divided by M2G, the G's cancel. And so let's say before I've been using this as 100 grams, and this is 50 grams, and if that's the case, it would be 100 over 50 equals two. That would be the coefficient of friction to make it not move, okay, the minimum. And that's way too high, that's way too high, okay? But if you think about it up here, I mean, this is not gonna actually happen in real life. 
I guess it technically could, okay? But normally the coefficient of static friction is less than one. If this mass is more than that one, then this force pulling to the side is gonna be greater than the combination of the normal force, which depends on this weight, and the frictional force, and the coefficient, right? So it's just always gonna be greater. Now, if I switch these around, if I make this one 100 grams and this 50, then it has a chance, because now it's, I flip these and I'd get 0.5. And that's more realistic, okay? So 0.5 coefficient of friction could possibly do this uh, to make it so it doesn't move, it just sits there. I guess the next real question is, what about on an inclined half atwood machine? And I'll do that problem. Uh, I'll set up, find the acceleration for a half atwood machine with incline and friction. That's all I'll do next.